Amen. If you would have checked the record to see from Wednesday to this Wednesday, the number of person that died, the number of person that was admitted in the hospital, the number of person that met an accident, the number of person that took ill, brothers and sisters, you wouldn't be imagined, but God kept us and we are grateful and we are thankful for his blessing. And when we find ourselves with good health, amen, and good spirit, let us pour it in the work of God, brothers and sisters, because we don't know. Time may come when we want to do it and we can't. So while we have the time now, let us give it to the work of God. God bless you. Welcome to this another evening as we forge ahead. Coming to you from the Church of God, Silver Keeping, here in Ottawa and Montreal. We are grateful to have you joining with us each and every Wednesday. And to God be the glory. Bow your heads with me. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to direct and lead. Amen. This our Bible study. And after prayer, then we're going to have Sister Heidi will be ministered to us in singing and then the man of God will come with the teaching of the undiluted word. Our oh God and our Father, we bow ourselves before you this evening. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. We want to thank you, Father, for who you are, faithful you are. Almighty oh, God, there is none like you, God. Only you could have raised the sun this morning. God, only you could have set it in the east, in the west, in the north, and in the south. Father, you put the sun and the stars and the moon to rule. The Father, no one have ever go and service one, and none have never gone out. What a awesome God you are. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. Oh God, you are our reason for living. You are our source of survival. We thank you for Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And through mighty God, the cross, we have access to your throne. We are free from sin. We are children of the most I God and we are glorifying you father thank you this evening as we join on this platform we pray God that your Holy Spirit will rule this platform this afternoon oh God we ask for a fresh anointing upon your man servant we pray for those who will be reading we pray for every question every comment oh God every answer let it be to your name to your honor to your glory your Holy Spirit will inspire this evening Evening. And that everyone that comes on, oh God, will never leave the way they came. And those that will be watching the delay will be blessed and edified as well. Lead, we pray, direct, we pray, oh God, as we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise as we leave this Bible study in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Glory to God. God bless you again. Welcome, welcome. At this time, we invite Sister Heidi, and she will minister to us in singing, after which Pastor Ash will come forward. Greetings, brethren. I hope everyone is doing well today. Amen. Um, happy to be here. So I'm going to share a song with you. It's called Light of the World. Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the wintry sky. Joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to flight. Light of the world, from the beginning, the tragedies of time were no match for your love. From great heights of glory, you saw my story. God, you entered in 
and became one of us. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Come and adore him, bow down before him, sing hallelujah to the light of the world. Light of the world, crown in a manger, born for the cross, to suffer, to save. High King of Heaven, death is the poorer. We are the richer by the price that he paid. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Come and adore him, bow down before him, sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Light of the world, soon will be coming with fire in his eyes, he will ransom his own. Through clouds he'll lead us straight into glory. And there he shall reign forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Come and adore him, bow down before him, sing hallelujah for the light of the world. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah for the things he has done. Come and adore him, bow down before him, sing hallelujah to the light of the world, the light of the world. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. Beautiful song. Beautiful singing. Sing hallelujah to the light of the world. Pass a hash to us in Jesus' name. All right. Greetings, beloved. Bless God. It's wonderful to be in the house of God with the saints of God and guests. I bless God for this opportunity to serve him and serve you all. So we bless God tonight. Amen. I'd like to also pray as well and join you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, we, we glorify you again. We thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for oh, giving us another breath of life today and keeping us, oh Father, through this day. May you give us the wisdom and understanding of your truth, the Amen. anointing of your spirit to hear what you have to say tonight. Oh, Father, remove every obstacle of the evil one, oh, Father God, far from this platform. Help Amen. us to have a heart that is willing to submit, not only to hear your word, but to submit to the authority of your word and live by it, oh, Father, forward. Amen. Speak to us tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, only do we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Okay. I just want to make sure Mike is good and everything is good thus far. Perfect, sir. Excellent. All right. Our subject, again, is the extension, right, of the identity of Jesus. We're talking about Jesus' extended identity. And we covered a lot of scriptures last week. We have some more to do this evening by the grace of God. I Again, I, I don't think we're going to be able to finish all these passages, but we're going to get us the gist of everything. 
um, from it tonight. I just want to do a little quick refresher. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 42, verse 5 to 8, one more time. And it says, Thus saith God, the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee, called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles, hallelujah, thus far, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I, will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And so I'll just stop there. So th thus far, if you look at this passage, it's declaring what? Who's speaking? God, the Lord. So remember, we talked about this, the Lord referencing Jehovah, right? So here's God, Jehovah. Who? Who is he? It is he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that, that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it. So whoever this Jehovah is, is also the creator that's created the heavens and the earth. Sounds so far clear? Yes. And the Lord called thee in righteousness. So this is the one that gives breath to the people. He's the one that created humanity. Who is he again? Okay, now go to Isaiah 45 as well. Again, we read these passages last time, but I'm just kind of catch you back up. Verse 11, thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker. So three pieces here. Whoever the Lord is, Jehovah, he is also the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. I have, what? Made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. So whoever this Lord is, Again, this word is Jehovah, is the Holy One of Israel. He is the maker. He is the one that what? Made the earth and created man upon it. And he says, I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens. So he's making it very personal, very clear. He's the one that was in charge. He's the one that executed the creation of everything. Okay? Okay. And then when we went to Exodus 6, go with me there, Exodus 6, 1 to 3. The Bible says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord. Who's speaking unto Moses? God. And he is saying what? I am the Lord. This is the same word again. Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Yehovah. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Uh-oh. We're bringing another big piece here. So he, this Lord that showed up to Moses is the same one that appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of what? 
God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So what is he saying? He's saying, by my name, Jehovah, it was not revealed to them that that was my name. I just appeared to them as God Almighty. That's how they knew me. But after time, God unpacked himself and the Logos, the word that was with him, that was involved with him, and he started to reveal more about him. Okay? So he was not known as Jehovah before, but only God Almighty with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So here's a question. Who appeared to Abraham out of the three men? Remember, there was three that came to Abraham. We're going to touch on that, hopefully, when we have time. Three came to Abraham, did they not? What was one of them? Who was that one? This is going to be very rich as we go forward. Because here it says, I appear to Abraham. So Abraham saw this Lord. But who did he see indeed? I'll leave that in thought for a minute, okay? So as I'm asking you if you have questions, I'm asking you if you have questions in relation to scriptures that we have studied already, okay? Passages that we are covered. I don't want us to jump ahead and bring up a passage from somewhere else and ask about that passage and that passage. You know, I, I have learned when I study the scriptures, I want to understand what I'm reading first before I bring another one that may seem to contradict or refute what is being said. So I encourage you to stay focused on the passages we go through. And then if we haven't covered one and time permits, then we will cover it at the end. Okay, sounds fair enough with everyone? Good. So any questions so far from some of these passages that I've just shared with you in regards to this Jehovah, this God, this Holy One of Israel? I better pull up the chat here just in case if I can see it. Again, if somebody can help me um, field whoever has questions for that or comments or whatever at this time. So, okay. Any questions or comments at this time? Okay. I see a hand that is raised. And this is Sister Sandra? Yes, it is. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Sister um wow i just noticed in um the same passage that you were you were reading exodus 6 um 2 and 3 um i'm noticing it says and god spake unto moses and said and then in 3 it says and i appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and so forth. So God, my my point or question, um, I don't know how to put this in a question frame, but I notice here, you know, reading the Bible, as you said, sometimes scriptures just appear to you that you've never noticed them before, touch your spirit. So God is God speaks and God appears. Woo! You you have hit an atomic bomb by saying what you just said. Okay? Because this is a key to identifying the extended identity of Jesus. I'm going to show you why I'm saying what I'm saying. You know, my sister, when I read these passages, it was during the time of my conversion. And Jesus revealed himself to me. God revealed himself to me. What is all of this about? Who is this man? The son of man, Jesus. Who is he? And I tell you, it, it just blew my mind away. It just blew it away. And so, yes. So you hear. So someone, this God is speaking to Moses. And this God, when he appears... And appears to who? It says what? We said appeared to Abraham, 
Isaac, and Jacob. He appeared. All right? So who is he? Well, let's continue. So so I, I, I'm I noting what you are sharing, the comment that you shared. I don't think you had a question, right? As no, of right now. It was okay. just um, something that just dropped in my spirit that I know. Hallelujah. About. Hallelujah. May, may we all experience the dropping of God's word into our spirit. Okay? Let's go now to John 18. I'm taking you from one side of the Bible to the other for a reason. Because sometimes we only read certain portions of the Bible. Not so? We need to get into that habit of going all over the place. We want to know everything, right? I want to have a full buffet. Okay, so John 18. I'll talk less and let the word speak more. John 18. Praise the Lord. Jesus, therefore knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. And lastly, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Woo! What did he say? Hmm. Not, did he just say, I am he? Yes, I am. Or did he say, I am he? I am, he. I am who? Hmm. I am he, Jesus, the one you're looking for. But why did they fall to the ground? Isn't I am he just a, a regular word? Or could he be emphasizing some things here? And they knew that this man is just not an ordinary man, but he had power and authority from heaven. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Now go to John 20. John 20, verse 28. Okay, before I go to verse 28, I'm going to go back up just a little bit. Now, remember, Jesus resurrected. He started to show up to the disciples. He revealed himself to the different ones, right? The Bible says in verse 24, let me put context in place. But Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. And stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Who's he talking to? Did he just call Jesus Lord and God? Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. See, many people have read the scriptures, read these things, but they still have not believed who Jesus is. As a pastor, Pastor Query alluded to last time. There are, we have many people that read the scriptures as I used to and never believed what the scripture actually was saying. Here is a doubting Thomas revealing the extended identity of Jesus. He said, my Lord and my what? 
God. Now, did Jesus say anything back to refute him? Don't you dare call me God. I'm not God. You know, when you watch Jesus carefully as he went through the land, anytime somebody did something to him, he'll correct them if they're off, right? He'll always refute them if they're wrong. Was Thomas wrong? Not at all. Thomas is declaring Jesus as Lord and my God. He's my God. Do we declare Jesus as Lord and my God? Let that soak for a second. I'm not finished. Now I want you to go with me to Colossians. Now remember, we just said read in Isaiah. The one that created all things was the Lord, Jehovah, the God Almighty, the Holy One of Israel. Right? Okay. Let's unpack it further. This one in itself, Thomas, my Lord and my God. Jesus receives it. No question. Now go to Colossians with me, beloved. And we're looking at Colossians chapter 1, beginning with verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of who? Of his dear son. Whose kingdom is it? In the, into the kingdom of his dear son. So if you're going to have a kingdom that makes you a king. So far, so good. So let's follow this carefully. Who has delivered us. I'm sorry, he, who has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is that so far? Is that Jesus? All agreed? Yes. Yes. All right. So let's continue. Who is the image of the invisible God? He's, he's, a, he's a what God? Wait a second. God is invisible? But I thought he appeared to Abraham. <laughs> Something is not jiving. Yeah. Beloved, this is the richness of God's word. So we have Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Can't see. Can you see invisible? No, I can't see invisible. Invisible is invisible. The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things what? Come on. For by him, this firstborn of every creature, this image of the invisible God, this redeemer that forgave my sins, for by him were all things what? Created that are in what? In heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Did you catch that? Created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. So he was before all things. And by him all things then have his being. And he is the what? The head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, 
the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, the majesty, the full rule, power, and authority. Who can rule by his own power and never died again? Only Jesus. The Bible is clear. How do we know this is Jesus? He's the head of the church. Isn't that right? Isn't Jesus the head of the church? We didn't stop. We, we're not finished. For it pleased, listen, the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Everything was to be complete in him. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to who? Unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature was un which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Who is this? Who created all things? In heaven, on earth, visible and invisible. Who reconciled us to himself? Who shed his blood? This is none other than Jesus. Do you see the connection so far? Isaiah said, the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah God Almighty, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord that created the heavens and the earth. Colossians comes and unpacks it further and says what? It is the one that is in the image of the invisible God. Who's that? Jesus. It is him that created everything. By himself and for himself. Are you following, beloved and brethren? Are you watching carefully here? Amen. He is before all things. Now listen to me. If he is the creator all, of all things, can he be created? <laughs> I want, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm using just some reason. First, I'm using some reason and some just basic logic. All right. If I am the creator of all things, God forbid, there's no way, right? If Jesus is the creator of all things, as it is written here, does that mean he was also created as one of the all things? Hmm. If it says he is the creator of all things, then he cannot be created. And he is outside of the creation. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Matter of fact, the Bible says that in, Ill, that in all things he might have the preeminence. God wanted him to be supreme over everything. We can't wrap our mind behind, around that. I mean, I'm telling you, we're only seeing things through a glass darkly, beloved. And friends. So... The creator can't be the one that's created. Otherwise, he's not the creator. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this creator is the one, Jehovah, God Almighty, Holy One of Israel, as it is written in Isaiah and all the other passages that we read earlier last week. So let's, let's continue to establish this. When you look at Colossians, okay, any, wait, wait, maybe I'll, I'll pause a second. Any questions on these passages first? I have a question. Okay, who am I speaking with? 
This is Brother Jeffrey. Okay, Brother Jeffrey. Um, actually, I, I have two questions, if it's okay. Uh, it's based on what you're reading. Um, so and when it says in verse 15 of Colossians, um, it says, uh, who is the image of the invisible God? It says the firstborn of every creature. So is this firstborn of every creature? Is this Christ who is the firstborn? Okay. So what are you asking by asking the firstborn? Are you saying that he was created or are you saying if he was before all born? Well, I'm asking, was he created in terms of him saying that he's the first born? Okay. First born means that he had to be born. He had to be created. Mm -mm. You're talking okay. two different things. We're talking well, different one, things. Okay, so let me let me let me break down what you're asking as best as I can. Okay. Do we understand what God just said, what this, the Holy Spirit just said about who created all things? So far. Mm -hmm. Jesus created all things. Right? Okay. So he can't be one that is created. It makes no sense. Totally. So what, what is this firstborn? I will address you in this. I want you to go with me to Psalm 89. 27. Let's see. Let's start with 26. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. In his children forsake my law, and walk not in my judgment, if they do, if they break my statutes, keep my commandments. Who is this? You're asking me, like, is it rhetorical or you wanted me to answer? No, no, I'm, I'm wanting to know, is this, what, who's this referring to? No, I'm Go asking. To verse 20. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Past I couldn't, I couldn't tell if you're asking rhetorically or not. That's why I'm no, sorry. I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just speaking out loud. I'm sorry. I want you to look at... Let's see, uh, verse 19. I, I have to even go further. All right. Then thou spakest in vision to thy holy one and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. Who is this? He's just speaking of David. He spe this passage is speaking of David, correct? As we saw the context clear. I got a question for you. Was David firstborn amongst his brethren? Remember when Samuel went to look for one to lead Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Was he the first born? No, sir. Are you sure? Ah, first born, not physically, but spiritually. Good. Now we are seeing something else here. We see that David could not have been the firstborn. All the other brothers, remember, he, he had to go through all the other ones. Uh -uh, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Give me that other. Give me that young man. But God is saying here 
that he was the my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. Spiritually. So could the meaning of firstborn not mean, number one, it can't mean created, that he was born first. It could not be. Not in this context, not in this understanding. So when we look then in Colossians and it says firstborn, I believe that it meant that he was before all things. In, in rank and superiority and in everything. Before Amen. all things. Just like David, even though he was not firstborn, God looked at him as superior, as king over all other kings. And out of that king comes Christ, the seed of David. Okay? Sure. Um, so, okay, sorry. So I look at this passage not to take it in a literal sense of firstborn or physical sense. It can mean first in preeminence or rank. That's how I understand it. Because any other way will refute all the other scriptures and make them a lie. Because the one that created all things meant all things. And it didn't mean him as one of those all things. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I reply? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I don't, I, I just want to say, I don't think they make the other scriptures about Christ um, a lie. I think they, they harmonize very well. Um, but the scripture you brought up in Psalms 89, um, it's in verse 27 says, I will make you, it says, I will make him my firstborn. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Colossians, it seems that it's telling, it's telling us that he is the firstborn of every creature. But um, the second question I wanted to ask is um, if it's an image of God, like, so in verse 15 of Colossians 1, it says, who is the image of the invisible God? Does, like, would that mean that he is a copy? He's not necessarily the original God himself, like the Jehovah, but is he a copy? Because image is not an original, right? Image is, is a copy of something. Well, again, remember, when you're dealing with the Godhead, when you're dealing with Jesus, we cannot deal with him with man's knowledge, man's understanding. So I believe he's a re image implying a reflection of God. And a so reflection then... is not anything uh, demeaning or that he is created or that he was made by God or anything like that. Yeah, well, does it, okay, so then he's not origin like he's not the original God, but he's an he's a image of God, right? Does, does that make sense? Well, there's two parts of it. You have number one, when he was in the beginning, he was the originator. And then when he became a son, he became what? Human. Right? Reflecting God's image as a human being. Does that make sense? Um, you 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 have to be careful to mix the two. There is we you have Christ. I don't want to even use the word Christ. You have Jesus as the Logos, as the Word in the beginning, in spirit form, if you may. And that's even you know catch you know touch if you not careful. Here he was in the beginning with God, and he was God. And then he became a man reflecting the image of the father in every attri in, in attributes and character and, and all kind of power. So the question is, who is the image of the invisible God does not mean that he was not God in the beginning. But in time, he also became a reflection of him. You... Did not God say we are created in his image? But he didn't say that about Jesus. He didn't say he was created in the image of God. That's what you have to be careful, my brother. That's just all I have on that. I don't have anything else to, to, to convince you one way or the other. I just, when all of these passages point to Christ as the creator, we can't go around that. Okay? 
we're going to talk about, okay, part of your question may also ask, is there a father God that's greater than him? And the answer is yes. But even though there's a father God greater than him, I'm going to show you how God dealt with him and how God authorized him and how he also plays a crucial part with God. I don't want to give it all away without the scriptures, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I hope that helps some. I don't know. I may not have answered all that you had. But no, I also see two I just wanted to hear okay. your reply to those two questions. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for asking. Um, okay. Who's next on, on there? Ms. Davidson. Okay. Ms. Davidson. Impossible. Good night, everyone. Okay. So you mentioned that Jesus is the creator. Okay, so there's a saying, God the Father. Go ahead. Father, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and um, there's a saying, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And you're saying Jesus is the creator and there's no one above him. So he's the creator, he created everything. So could you explain in relation to the subject that you're discussing, break down God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, because God is the Father. So is Jesus the Father too? So could you could you elaborate on that? I, I'm going to because I've heard that question that saying all the time. Thank you. Be beautiful question. Okay, now I didn't say anything about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Number one, I never said any of that. But yeah, I am but saying, I'm saying it. right. I I understand you. So. In the past passages that we studied, we saw that, in, for example, in John 1, and I'm going to take my time here with you, okay? So John 1, it says what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So there's two things happening. So in the beginning, what beginning? The very same thing in Genesis. So John is bringing us back to Genesis when it says in the beginning, okay? And in the beginning, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So God, the word God is plural. I believe this is what John is saying. John is saying you have Father God and you have the Logos, which is the word of God with Father God. And and as God thought what he wanted, and then he spoke the Logos, the word, then the spirit came into play and created then what was asked by the Logos, the word. And God revealed that this Logos or this word in John and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is that? The word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus. None other than Jesus. But see, I'm, I'm being careful because Jesus was not a son with the father in the beginning of creation. Because he was not yet born. And God the father was not called father until he had a, a son. So once God had a son, then Jesus started to reveal to us that God is a father that has a son. Hallelujah. You understand? But before that, he was God Elohim and it's plural with what became the son. The word that became Jesus. Does that help? Yes, I. Someone posted uh, John ten. Yes, we're gonna. Yes, we're gonna that helps a lot. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Sure. Very good question, and, and and it helps clarify. So I I want to share yeah, this. With you. What Jeffrey was asking too. Okay. So so Thank I you. want I wanted to clarify something to make sure you understand. Also, so the father. And the son share the spirit. Well, that sounds like a throwdown if I ever heard one. Yeah, it's really one. They share 
the Holy Spirit. You see? And each have their distinct responsibility and one op cannot operate. How can I put it? They operate in harmony. Jesus said, I came to do the will of my father, which is father. in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the spirit takes instruction from who? The son. And I, when we, if we get time, we, maybe we have to build another study one day about the spirit and, and the different parts as far as we understand it. So the father and the son shared the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit executed what was asked of him in the very beginning. Okay, so John chapter one. Now, now tell me if this is coincidence or not. I don't believe in coincidence. John chapter one declared Jesus's identity. That he was with the father was God. He was God in the beginning. He created all things. Colossians chapter one again declares the extended identity of Jesus and who he is. Now go to Colossians chapter 2. Do I have anybody else has, asking questions? I just don't want to miss anybody. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, Col Colossians 2. When you go to Colossians 2, listen to this. Rich passage. Verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What in the world is this? And you, and then it says what? And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality or rule and authority and power. We are complete in this Christ Jesus, who is what? He, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God saw to it that in Jesus, the Godhead dwells in him. Everything dwells in him. That's why you will see that God the Father says, uh, he's given all authority to Jesus, everything. Nothing moves, nothing functions without his say. And the Godhead is engulfed in him. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this in there. All right. This is so awesome. So remember when go to Matthew. Now I'm I'm moving from my script for a second. Go to Matthew. Matthew 28. As the Spirit of God leads here. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, what? All power, all power is given unto me, where? In heaven and in earth. What, yeah. what, does, what does all power mean? What does all power authority. mean? Authority. All authority. Do you think anything was left out? Nope. So all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and in earth. And he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the what? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? And I, I don't want to go into a major discussion in this passage, but I want to, I'm trying to brief you carefully here. I want you to teach all nations, baptizing them in the, the name. Did it say name or names? Name, one. Name, what name? Jesus. Jesus. The name thus far, and I always say thus far, 
Because remember, God has been un unpacking who he is and his identity and his name over time. As far as we know thus far, this name that represents the Father, that represents the Son, and represents the Holy Ghost is who? Jesus. That's why when we baptize, we baptize in the name of Jesus. How do we know? How do we know that's exactly what it means? Because when the apostles started to baptize, they baptized in the name of Jesus. So we understood the working out of the scripture was that what Jesus meant by this passage is that you are to baptize in the name of Jesus, period. And so that's why the apostles did it. They understood the working out of the passage and what Jesus meant. Otherwise, Jesus would have stopped them before he left. Or he would have said something after. And Paul, even though he was not one of the 12, also did the same thing. He baptized in the name of Jesus. But I, again, I'm not going to go into baptism and, and, and baptizing in the name of Jesus. I'm just trying to tell you that this name, hallelujah, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. This is how it's identified. The fullness of the Godhead bodily, Jesus. Are you with me? All right, I'm going to pause. I see a question. R hand raised. Who's it? Uh, who's this? Pastor Marshall. Pastor Marshall. Praise the Lord, brethren. Pastor Hush. I, um, I'm just saying this, that at the baptism of Jesus Christ, God says, here is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Just to concur with what you have said. When God have, have, have already given Jesus all power to do everything, so in the name of Jesus Christ, and the name Christ is the Holy Spirit because the angel testifies that. So we see that all three envelope in the one thing. And if you remember that electricity is electricity all the way through. The big 10,000 watt and you have the the, 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 the little 10, 10 and 10 and 20, all of them is electricity and they go back to the big power. That's right. All of them funnel in. I like your analogy. All of it funnel in to him. And that's what God, that's why Colossians says that he has the preeminence above all things. If these do not convince you of the extended identity of Jesus, well, let me bring another one. Hebrews chapter 11. A again, beloved, I mean, we could spend so much time in each, each of this passage, so I'm not giving it its due diligence, its due, you know, respect, but I'm trying to give you a menagerie of passages to bring out what I've been trying to bring to you all this time. Go to Hebrews 1. In interesting, John 1. Colossians 1, now Hebrews 1. <laughs> I wonder if God is saying Jesus is first. <laughs> I wonder if he's just making it clear. Jesus is first. <laughs> okay, Hebrews 1. I may, let's see. How do I want to do this? Okay. God, verse 1. Who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, having these last days spoken to us unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he what made the world, made the world, God by. Jesus made the worlds, the ages, everything, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. 
Who upholds all things by the word of his power? Jesus. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Who is this? Same Jesus. Sat down where? With the majesty. Now, who sits on the throne? God. Who sits beside God on the throne? Jesus. What? <laughs> Hallelujah. He shares the throne with Father God? Wow. What? We're not done. I'm, again, I'm not doing it justice. He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He deserved it. Yeah. Being made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He was made better than the what? Than the angels. Yeah. So again, my purpose is to equip you as you do mission work as well out there and you're dealing with false teachings, okay? So one of the teachings, and again, I'm not picking on Jehovah Witnesses or anybody else. I'm just saying the ones that I've run into in Jehovah Witness teaching, for example, they say that Jesus is an angel. Uh-oh. Being made so much better than the angels. Hallelujah. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And ever. again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. When did he yeah. ever say that to angels? Never. 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 Hallelujah. You are my son and this day I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Never. Angels are not. Now listen, and, and this may step onto some of your teachings or maybe some of your studies or some of your beliefs before. Here the scripture shows he does not identify angels as sons. Amen. So when you study other scriptures and it talks about sons, of God, be careful what you are interpreting them to me. Because here it says what? That thou art my son this day. And he says, I'll be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world. So when Christ came, he says what? And let all the angels of God Worship him. Uh, we got a problem here. Not so? Isn't this a big problem? Not for us if we believe who Jesus is. Yeah. Let all the angels of God worship him. So number one, he couldn't have been an angel because if he was an angel, he had to bow down to himself. And it doesn't make sense. So that's out. Number two, when it says worship, let all the angels of God, difference between angels of the devil, right? Angels of God worship him. Now I want to take you to a quick passage, real quick, very simple. Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Can someone, this is again not in the script, and you know me, you're going to have to learn me by now. I allow the Spirit of God to take over. So, I don't follow the notes too well. Matthew 4, 8 to 11. Can someone read that for me? Can I have a reader for that? I know it's not in the script. Not, not yet. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, 
all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Thou shalt, um, again, verse 12, uh, verse 11 too. Go ahead. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. How wonderful. Always remember, fellowship is so important. If Jesus needed ministering in the time of temptation, in the time of trial, and angels came to minister to Jesus, beloved, we need one another. The, at least we need one another to minister to one another, to help one another. If the Savior needed ministering when he was in the flesh, we need ministering because we are also in the flesh. And so, but look at what Jesus says to the devil. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Hebrews chapter 1. And, and God said what? And let all the angels of God worship him. Who is him? Who is Jesus saying to the devil? Worship. Worship God. Who is him? Who is being worshipped? Me. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh God. Me. Jesus. I am part of the God. Did Jesus at any time refuse worship? When the blind man and the lame and the leper came and bowed down and worshiped him, did he say, no, 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 get up. I'm merely a man. Zero. Now listen to me. This is so serious here. For Christ to receive worship, the Pharisees and Sadducees would say that's blasphemy because it's only allotted to who? God. God. It's only permitted toward God. That's why they wanted to kill him. Because he was unpacking to them that he is a member of the Godhead and they couldn't grasp it. And so that's why they wanted to stone him to death because he was declaring himself to be God. And I'm going to show you some passages that are very rich. Okay, back to Hebrews 1. And of the angels, verse 7, and of the angels, he says, who maketh his angels spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, listen, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hands. God, speaking to God. Oh God, look at this again, verse 8. Unto the Son, he says, thy throne. The Son has a throne with the Father. Oh God, your throne, oh God. That's why Matt, uh, Matthew, Dad and Thomas said what? My Lord and my God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's everlasting. The scriptures identifying him as God. How do we know? He's the one that loved righteousness. He's the one that hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your, your, your fellows. And you, you Lord, thou Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they shall wax old, as does a garment. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be chained. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. He lives forever. Everlasting. 
But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Did he ever say to the, any of the angels, sit beside me until I make? Did he ever say that to anybody? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? There's a lot here, and I know that. But here it clearly showed that God, through Christ, he made the worlds. That he is supreme above all angels. That he was charged to be worshipped. Archangel Gabriel, Michael, everybody worship him. So, Michael is not Jesus. Uh-uh. Be careful. In these teachings, okay, how people play with these things. But Jesus, remember the word angel, is a messenger, right? The word angel means messenger. And as a messenger, he appeared many times in the Old Testament. We'll touch maybe on that when we get some time. But before I run ahead, here is Hebrews 1, Colossians 1, John 1, Saying who Jesus is. You Lord in the beginning. Has laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens. Are the works of thine hands. How could you refute that? And in the Old Testament. In Isaiah. It says the Lord. Yehovah. Mighty God. Elohim. Laid the foundation, created the heavens and the earth. Who is Jehovah? Who is the I am? That was before with Abraham. I could sing a song. But I don't want to destroy the message. Any questions so far in some of these passages? Again, I'm trying just to build... This so you can see the fullness and the richness. Jesus received worship. Only God is to receive worship. Okay? If not, Hebrews 2, 5 to 10. If I can have a reader for that one. Hebrews 2, 5 to 10. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the word to come, whereof we speak, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in, under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with the glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste dead for every man. Ten and last, for it became him for whom all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Thank you. So we see that the time when Jesus was made a little lower than the angel was because he became human. And as he, as he went through suffering, that was made him lesser than the angel. But God what? Elevated him back into the glory and the honor that he fully deserves. For by whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. God wants to do that with us. Bring many sons to glory. The father brought the son to glory. To the glory that he had with him from the very beginning of the world. That's why he was able to sit on the throne. 
he accomplished also what was required of him to his fullest. First Peter chapter 3, 21 to 22. First Peter chapter 3, 21 to 22. The like figure we're going to even baptism that also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer for good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Oh, what is subject unto him? Angels and authorities and powers being subject unto Jesus. Mm. And if that doesn't convince you, Ephesians 3. Go to Ephesians 3, verse 8 and 9. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, some people say, well, oh, this is not in my Bible. Yep, they took it out and they should not have. Well, it's not in the old manuscripts. Fooey. On them. In context, here it says what? which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, just like it said in Hebrews. So it belongs there. And I believe this has been hid from the very beginning as well. Not only the mystery, remember the mystery that he's referring to in context is about reaching the Gentiles, saving the Gentiles. But this here, this truth has been hid. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. So let's keep building. Any questions so far? Okay. Philippians 2 then. Philippians 2. Let me just set context, if I may, if, beginning with verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was what? Are you scratching your head some more? If you keep no. on scratching, you're going to lose hair. <laughs> I'm telling you, I lose a lot of it every time I look at these passages. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took it upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus. Everything to bow to him. And you telling me he cannot be God? And you are telling me that he must be created? How can that be? The creation submits to the creator. Jesus emptied himself from that divinity, if you want to call it, the glory that he had and became a human being. Look at what God is teaching us. We need to humble ourselves, beloved. We need to live a life of humility. You think you're all of that? I know so much about the word of God. I am in charge. I'm theologian, master, master missionary, master teacher, master pastor. Humble, humble yourself. Jesus came down. We, we sit in too high too many times. We need a basin and a towel and learn to wash each other's feet. Our savior, our creator. See, this is where I'm taking you. Jesus, the creator, came and said, I want to serve you. I want to wash your feet. And you telling me we can't wash each other's feet? Let this mind be in you. That, that was equal with God. God came down and said, I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to die for you. And we're not willing to forgive one another or help one another in the needs or whatever it is. How could that be? We are saying we are greater than Jesus when we do that. Well, I can't stand my husband. He makes me mad. Pray for him. You make God mad sometimes too. I can't stand my wife. She's not willing to respect me all that. Pray for her. You don't respect God too sometimes as well, sir. Pray for one another. Serve one another. Love on each other. Get low. Get low. When, you, when we come to the supper table, remember what your Savior, your Creator, your Lord, L-O-R-D, Jehovah, came down. Holy One of Israel came down to wash and die for you and me. It's time for us to die for one another and serve one another. So listen to me, if he was equal with God, equal with God, so he has full preeminence, full authority, full power, right? But isn't God greater than him? Yes, John 14, 28, please read that. John 14, 28. He have heard now, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If he loved me, he would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. The Father is greater than him. But equal. See, we can't, we can't get it here. But he's equal with the Father. Now watch carefully. Go to 1 Corinthians now to couple this passage, 15, with me. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 15, verse 28. Oh, actually, and back, when up a second. back up just a second. We'll go to verse 23. Set context for me. Okay, verse 23. Let me see. Okay. I'm sorry, verse 22. You may have to go back to verse, verse 22. 22. Yes. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. No. Verse 23, as of 22, you said. Yes, go ahead. Verse 22, all the way. For as verse. in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
That's verse 22. Yes, continue from there. And to continue. Okay, okay. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits afterward, they that are Christ at his coming, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he said unto all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. 28 and last. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Mm. A lot to look at coming, right? So Jesus, in the meantime, is ruling until he has put all enemies under him. He must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy just shall be destroyed is death. And when it says when he has put all things under his feet, that mean that that didn't mean that the father would be under his feet. No, the father excluded when it's referring to that. But when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. So here's my question. If the Son will one day be subject to the Father, what was he before he was subject to the Father? Are you following me? If he one day will subject himself after he finished accomplishing the work of the Father, and it says that he will be subject then to the Father. What was he before he became subject to the Father? God, the Father. Has to be. Equal with God as it was written in Philippians. Equal with the Father as it was in the beginning of Genesis. He was there. There, now he is there beside the Father on the same throne. With the Father until he makes all enemies subdued. Hallelujah. Jesus reigns. Worship him. Isaiah 43. You know, let me do this because I'm watching time. Isaiah 43. Let's do that one. 10 to 11. That is mine to read. If you haven't spent time in Isaiah, I really encourage you to take time. Take time. It's rich. You, Verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Does that sound familiar? I am he. Before me, there was no God formed. There was no God formed. Before me, there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. I have declared and I've saved and I showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, the Lord, that I am God. Who's this? Who's saying that there is no savior beside me? Hmm? <laughs> Tell me, please. Because if you say, is God the Father, you're in trouble. The Messiah is saying. The Messiah. Jesus. No savior beside me. We believe in Jesus as the only savior. And he's declaring what? I even am the Lord, Yehovah. And beside me, there is no Savior. 
Who's the Savior in the Old Testament? Declares it right here. The Lord, L-O-R-D, capital. The Lord, he's him. He's the Savior. And in, in Isaiah, when you look over the page in 44 as well, verse 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Who's the re Redeemer? Jesus. He is the Lord of hosts. Jehovah, I am the first. I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Now what? See, we don't believe in two gods or three gods. We believe that there's one God. Made up of the Father and of the Son. There's one God. That's why he says here, beside me there is no God. Who's speaking? The first and the last. Who's he? Jehovah. Who's he? The one that created everything. Who is he? Jesus. Are you understanding so far? And who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient people. And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. None. What do we do? And then couple it with 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Or maybe, well, hang on a second. Don't do that. Since we're in Isaiah, let's, let's, let's go to Isaiah 48, verse 12 to 16. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel my called. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. My hand also has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye, assemble yourself in here, which among them has declared these things. The Lord has loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that I, it was. There am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Who is this? Who leads the way? Jesus. The Holy One of Israel. The Redeemer. How could we, how could we think anything different than these things? And then when you couple it with 1 Corinthians 10, 4, so you can see that I'm not just making this stuff up. First Corinthians. I'm telling you, these are the passages that the Lord brought to me. So that I can be delivered. And know him. First Corinthians 10. Oh, look at look at this. Remember those. It says. Uh, Verse beginning with verse one, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and not rock was who? Who is he? Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. 
Who was in the wilderness? Jesus. Who spoke to Moses? Jesus. Who gave the Ten Commandments? Jesus. Who created everything? Jesus. Do you want to know more about Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. And one of you brought out the good point earlier about they appeared unto him. And that was in 1 John 4.12. Let me take you to that passage real quick to answer that point that was brought out earlier. 1 John. First John 4. No man has seen God. When? At any time. At any time. No man has seen God at any time. And we're talking about God the Father. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. This is a rich passage, by the way. You've got to reflect on this. So no man has seen God at any time. So who did Abraham see? Who talked with Abraham? If no man has seen God at any time, who talked with Abraham? Tell me. Go to Genesis. Who talked with Abraham? Genesis 18. Remember this passage? And he lifted up, verse 2, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor, did any of, look at this. If I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. And when you go down and you continue to read, therefore, verse 12, therefore, this is, uh, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am wax old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, who said this? Who's this Lord? Who is this Lord? God. God. Who? Specifically. Jesus. Yeah, this is the word Yehovah. Jehovah. So, if no man has seen God at any time, we're talking about Father God, as it is written in John, then who did Abraham talk to? When it says, and the Lord said to Abraham, where did, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord, Jehovah, at the time appointed? The three men haven't vanished yet. So who is talking to Abraham? Face to face. Jesus. In the form of before he became a son. And you will see many passages in the scripture where he shows up in so many different ways. Who is the captain of the Lord of hosts? Why did Joshua bow down to him and he didn't tell him get up? Who is this? Jehovah. The Lord, and the Lord said to Abraham, who did Abraham plead with? If there is 40, if there is 30, if there is 10, who did he plead with? Okay, I think I've made a lot of my points clear. There's so much more to help clarify even more with you. But any questions or comments thus far based on what we just read,
in many of these passages. Because time is gone. Uh, so the God makes his appearance in, can I say, in several different ways. Pastor Ash, he can speak to us and he can appear in some way or fashion to us as we're reading from the word of God today, still, of course. What? So he's able to manifest himself to us, who he is in that fashion, that way. Well, what I believe is that's how he did it back then until Jesus came. Now he speaks to us through his son, right? As the scripture teaches. So carefully, we, we rightly divide the word of God here. So that's, he was unpacking himself piece by piece earlier, showing up here, showing up there, showing up here. And it eventually led to Jesus. Yes. And now he speaks to us Jesus. by his son. Yes. Right? That doesn't mean that we may not entertain angels. Angels do and can appear today as well. And we have even encountered that. I know you may think we're crazy, but that is okay. We've had that. Okay? And so, but it was in the form of a man. He came as a messenger, a man to the assembly. Okay? So, Jesus, God speaks through his son to us. Remember when Paul or I should say Saul first, on the road to Damascus. What happened? Who showed up? Who spoke? Who knocked him off of his high horse, if I may say? <laughs> Jesus, right? So Jesus spoke to Paul and Saul. So God speaks through his son to us and by his spirit. And he sends messengers to us. We could entertain angels, unawares. He can speak to us. But that's as far as I know. Not like it was before where Jesus, I mean, uh, like Jehovah was popping up in different places as the captain of the Lord of hosts or to Moses or to Abraham and so forth. Okay? No, he speaks now to us through his son. Okay? Does that answer your question, sis? Yes, it does. Thank you. Wonderful. I do want to, I'll, I'll throw this at, okay. I see another hand. <clears throat> yes, Pastor Ash. Um, in Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, And God who at sundry times and in diverse manners, not the diverse manners, I know that can mean by the lightning and whatever, but the sundry times. Uh, spoken to us by our fathers and the prophets. So um, when we think of what happened in, in Ab Abraham meeting these three men, would, would, could, we, could we equate that as God speaking in this different form through his yes. son? Yeah, because it says what? God who at sundry times in divers men has spake in time past unto the father by the prophets. And so I believe that is the son that or or what became the son. So the word that became the son is the one that spoke in time past. Okay. So when when that those three men showed up, the one who had the capital L O R D, we can think of I uh, that's something like a new insight for me, because this is one of my favorite passage I quote all the time is anything too hard for God and always talking about, but I never really paid attention to that capital L O R D until probably tonight as I'm reading it again. So I'm I'm mulling over what you're saying in my mind, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I never saw it myself until I started digging and I dig and I said, What? And I tell you, this this doesn't stop here. 
because it takes us onto another level. Remember when uh, David says, you know, our favorite Psalm, Psalm 23, the Lord is my, what? The mm-hmm. Lord is shepherd. my shepherd. shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not right? Want. The L-O-R-D capital letter, the Jehovah is my shepherd, right? So who is that great shepherd of the sheep? John 10. Look at that passage. John 10 says what? John 10 at 11, verse 11. I am. John 10, 11. 11 to 13. 13 it says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not see the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep and the hireling flees because he's a hireling and careth not for the sheep. So who's the good shepherd? I am. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I'm the good shepherd. Who yes. did the psalmist say? The Lord is my shepherd. Who is, who's this Lord? Jehovah. Huh? So who's the good shepherd? Jehovah, who became Jesus. Who huh? is Jesus. It, who is Amen. Jesus. Amen. Are you following me? See how simple, see how God just brings it together, piece by piece. Amen, amen. I am the good shepherd, Jesus. Yes. And um, in, even in John 5, 37, it even talks about how it says, when, when Jesus was dealing with the Pharisees in John 5, 37, And the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And let me take you just to the final passage of Revelation. It's, it's final, meaning it's the last passage, hopefully, to touch on. Remember when I told you about the Word of God? And the Word of God, and the Word of God. Go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword, sharp sword that with it he should smite the nation. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He should tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who's that? Whose vesture is dipped in blood? Almighty. The word of God, the almighty, the son. Okay, let me stop here because I know time has passed already. Mm-hmm. Any questions about what we just read, what we covered? I'm sorry we couldn't cover many other passages, but as time permits. Any comments or questions based on what we just talked about? 
Ash. Yes. Brother Orville here. Good night, sir. How are you? Is that right, Brother Orville? <laughs> that is right, my friend. <laughs> I, I just thought I would snuck up on you tonight. <laughs> okay. Praise no. God. Praise God. Praise God. Um, if 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 I might add, sir, um, th there are times when an angel speaking on God's behalf speak if it is God that is speaking. And so even the same name, same word that is used represent God, used to represent that angel as well, because he's representing God in that fashion. And I, I what first comes to my mind is that interaction with um, uh, Gideon and... Um, and, and the angel, as he met him for the first time, to, and he called him a mighty man of valor. <laughs> and Gideon kind of looked around because he was hiding out there, kind of threshing in the field there, you know. But yeah, that's the same word that was used. I think it's actually in a, um, um, Judges chapter 6, I mean, around verse 13, 14 or so. He, Gideon referred to the angel as... as um, I don't like speaking in darkness. So, yeah, Gideon Gideon referred to the angel as Lord, as if he was talking to God. Um, I, 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 this is not necessary, but I, but permit me, please. I, I, I must commend you for taking on such a, um, a challenging topic. It's, it's, it's. Uh, it's a topic that our, a lot of our brethren has uh, difficulty in grasping the fact that Jesus Christ is God. And he, they will actually go to war with you about it. Amen, but, amen. But um, it's, 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 it, it wasn't easy for, for our churches to get to that point. And so... I I think that there are brethren who are listening on tonight that have found that challenging as well, and and so my con commendation, sir. I I really, I really appreciate insight that you brought to it, especially <laughs> reminding us that God did die. <laughs> God died for us. You know, it's it's. And amen, yeah. amen. That, 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 Hallelujah! Yeah, that, 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 thank you, Jesus. So, again, again, thank you, my dear brother. May the Lord continue to bless and prosper you, and and may he establish you abundantly. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Longo, my brother. I appreciate what you shared. Yes, there there was times where the angels would appear. And as I was reading in Judges, it says the angel of the Lord. So it was the angel of the Lord as you were bringing out. Sure. And this topic is painstaking to many. You are right. It's very difficult. And I've seen many churches divide over this. And they should not be. Actually, we're supposed to be searching these scriptures and know what it's saying. If I was to unpack for you all the rest of it in Revelation, you will see that the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, whose eyes are a flame of fire, et cetera, et cetera, is Jesus. God the Father has given him preeminence. And when you look at uh, who, when, when the Lamb is on the throne, he also receives worship, as Father God also receives worship. And they bow down before him. You are worthy. You are worthy to open the book and so forth and and to so so we see this magnificence of the father god and jesus also together they are one there's not two gods don't ever make that fallacy there's one god you see it's kind of like we have one church but there are many members we have one family and there are many in the family right so there's one godhead here one not this and that and 
and he receives worship. And when everything is finished, he submits. And if he submits, that means he used to be equal with the Father. He's equal with the Father. Yes, I see Brother Portillo, Brother Joel from Trinidad in Tobago. Pleasant night, everyone. Um, Brother Joel here. It's a it's a very uh a heavy topic. Um, I I did not grow up in the church per se, but um, as I read the scripture, because there's a lot of teaching that when they read the Old Testament, when they speak about Lord and God and such like, it speaks about God the Father, right? But as I as I read the scriptures, I, I like to like the variants as the scripture would say, you know, go and study, study the word of God, look at it, you read the scripture again over and over and you check it out for yourself to see exactly what is being said, what is being to what is being taught. And I realized that mainstream Christian, they are teaching that what the Old Testament is speaking about, when they say Lord and God and Jehovah, they are speaking about God the Father. But as I read further on into the New Testament, John 1.1, 1, 1, one of my favorite scriptures, I, I, and Hebrews and such like, many of the scriptures that you have quoted, Pastor Ash, I realize that the Old Testament is speaking about Jesus Christ or the word before he became flesh, before he became flesh. So I, I came to the conclusion, just as you have taught tonight, um, that the scripture is actually speaking about Jesus Christ, the word becoming flesh. So he was known as the, the word before, and only as he became flesh, he was known as Jesus Christ. So it's a heavy topic. Many would, as the brother and he would have said before, many would challenge, challenge. But I would say, go back, read, read, read. Before you challenge, empty yourself of everything that you have been taught. Read over the scriptures, read over the scriptures for yourself. And check it out to see what was said, if it is truth, and if it is truth, which is, I believe it is, hold on to it. So as I said before, it's a heavy topic. Many will challenge it, but I, I, I love I love the how you brought out so many different pointers, so many scriptures, you know, to, to back up what you are saying. And I believe that the word of God has to back up itself. Back up itself and prove its own self to be true. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joel. Very well said. And that's what I want to also encourage you all. Take time, soak all of this up, okay? Um, different ones that still have maybe some questions and so forth. Don't, don't conclude based on what you think is a human being, on even words, definition, or what does this mean or that one. What does begotten mean versus created and all of these things? Learn through the scriptures themselves. Do everything you can where you do not go outside of the scripture. That's the fallacy that we have. We want to go outside of the scripture, but God gave us a full book that is beautiful, that can confirm each other. It's complete. It's infallible. You understand? It's all, all sufficient. And so it's imperative that we go within the word of God and like Brother Joel has said also, uh, also, throw out what you used to. I, listen, I had to empty myself of Catholicism, Adventism, all kind of che teachings that even Jehovah Witnesses, when they were trying to come and tell me, you know, Jesus is this and Jesus. I said, nah. You know how God is beautiful? When you study the original, then you can find out the counterfeit. Don't spend time studying the counterfeit. Study the original. The word, mean, I'm not talking about going to original manuscript. What I mean, original means study the word of God. That's Make God. it your ruler of life, beloved. And when you do that, then you can see the counterfeit, the, the, the washed down or those 
that may be ignorant because they were not taught right. And that's what I was. I, was, I wasn't taught these things. All right? Love on them. You know what? I, I don't quickly throw out the Jehovah Witnesses. I have embraced. I brought them in. I've brought them into my house. I'm telling you, we discussed this subject so much that the elders that were there couldn't answer my question. And they had to take me to their daddy's house. And we went and visited with daddy. So we had a big, huge, you know, gathering together. And we were rightly dividing the word of God. And he, he asked the older gentleman, I respected him. And he said, why are you so adamant about knowing who Jesus is? I said, because does anything else matter if I didn't know who he is? Is it profitable to build on any other teachings if I can't Amen. get the foundation? Truth of God. Amen. Set. Get to know Jesus. And the point that I want to bring to you that really changed my life when I read these passages is that our creator, Jesus, said, I'm coming down because God cares to rescue you and me. I'm going to die for you. Your creator and my creator, your God and my God, died to save our lives should we continue to live a life of sin should we continue to be hateful and mean and bitter against one another should we continue to be unforgiving and with malice and should we say this belongs to me and no i'm not going to share and give of myself our creator gave his life isn't this awesome and he wants us to share in that life with him. And not only that, he wants to go inside of us and dwell in us. Our creator wants to live in me, this wretched, filthy, wicked flesh of mine that is being sanctified day by day. He wants to live in me and you. Isn't this wonderful? So no matter what sins you've committed, repent and turn to God and let him dwell in you. And you dwell in him. And through you, he may create some things. <laughs> Don't you know that's the ultimate thing? That he would have children that are born again from him. He was born once. So that we can be born again. Isn't that lovely? And so that others can also be born again. Through him. And by us. The instruments of his. Blessed hand. I turn it back over to you Pastor Query. And moderator Sister Sandra. Thank you for all your time. Blessings to everyone. Thank you all for your patience and time with me. I know we're over time. But I turn it back over to you Pastor Query. To God be the glory. Thank you, Pastor Ash. What can I say or what can I add? It is the truth of God word. And I am extremely edified and blessed and empowered tonight by the teaching and the presentation. To God be the glory. We thank you, sir. And we continue to pray for your one family and ministry and that you will continue to be brave and steadfast in teaching the truth of God word. That's what we're all about. We come to hear the truth and nothing but the truth. To God be the glory. I'm going to invite Pastor Ovil Rose to just close us off in prayer. Please, sir, good to see you. Nice having you with us. And at the end, we're going to ask Pastor Marshall to do the honor of blessing us. And then just a quarry will come forward. Thank you. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is in me. Praise his mighty name. Father, we bless your name tonight, Lord, as we give you thanks for opening our eyes, getting us deep into your words, oh God, through your man servant, Master. Lord, we thank you for ministering unto us in such a marvelous way. Amen. Reminding us, O oh God, that you who loved and created us 
created us in your own image, oh God. You who made us your image bearers upon the earth. You loved us so much, oh God, that you you came down and you died on our behalf that we might be rescued, that we might be redeemed. Amen. And as you were reminded of these things tonight, Lord, I pray that we will ponder them deeply. God, you loved us so much that it wasn't just us alone, but the whole world that you created, oh God, you you reminded us that you'd send not just unto the world to destroy the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. So Father, we pray that you will continue to bless our lives in a marvelous way. Teach us more of your truth. Oh God, that we would live them out in our lives. Oh Father, the preacher reminded us You've loved us so much that you gave your life for us. Amen. So God, if there's any sin remaining in our life, may we confess it so that your love might be manifested. Oh, Father, that we might bring and bear fruit unto righteousness. Mercy upon us, O Creator, King Eternal. I pray you will bless everyone that was privileged to be here tonight, Lord, to listen to your Amen. words. And, oh, Father, that we might grow more and more to honor your Son, Jesus Christ. And realizing that he's God and God alone, oh Father, even those who would condemn him as he walked this earth, saying that he blasphemed because he presumed to forgive sin. As your word had declared that none but God can forgive sin. And yet, Lord, your son forgave sin because he was God. Father, we thank you for tonight. May your grace dwell upon us. May our lives bear fruit as we tell others of your truth. May our lives bear fruit, Father, as we live more for you. Continue to bless the ministers of your church, O oh Father. Continue to bless those who would who would serve in so many different ways, making oh even this ministry possible. Be with us tonight, O oh Lord, in a special way we pray. Father, we beg these mercies and give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, amen. Pastor Rose. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Pastor Marshall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my brethren. Hallelujah. Let us come to reward his servant, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will he find us watching. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Communion, may he remain, rest and abide with us now and forever, until Jesus come. Let the saints of the living God shout, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise, praise God. Amen. Praise, praise God. God. God bless you, Pastor Marshall. Thank praise. you. Thank you. Mr. Quarry.